This is the rear ride height adjuster assembly. It is comprised of a spring perch, gold, and the thread adjustment ring, red anodized aluminum. What one should do before installing these on the vehicle is to remove the locking Allen key or socket head bolt with a socket head or Allen wrench. Simply unscrew it out as so. Liberally apply anti-seize to prevent galvanic corrosion between the steel bolt and the aluminum adjustment ring. Put back in place and just get started. And you'll notice that it made a squeaking sound as we were taking it out and now it really is going in nice and smooth. That's a symbol, I'll be a minor one of the fact that you know there's no internal friction on it. Next, the threaded ride height adjuster will sit like this on the lower control arm and this bolt at the bottom holds it steady and tight against the arm once again, this is aluminum, this is steel. We want to dress this with anti c so as to prevent galvanic corrosion and get true torque reading. Getting ready, when getting ready to install the uh, right high adjuster, brush out any remaining dirt particles or rubber or anything else that may be on the lower control arm. Then you'll see one end is dished and the other is truly a cutout. Put the cutout end down as so over the protrusion of the lower control arm. Holding the right height adjuster, place the bolt with the lock washer and then big washer in order into the hole and from the top screw on the red right height adjuster. Once hand tight, using a 19 millimeter box end wrench, tighten as best possible the bolt holding the right height adjuster. And this can be a little bit difficult, obviously, due to space constraints, particularly on the exhaust side. So fumbling is uh, a necessary part uh, of doing this, so uh, don't, don't fret about that. To set initial ride height prior to corner balancing, I recommend four turns up from uh, fully seated at the bottom. There's one, two, three, and four. Then simply lock down the socket head bolt that you previously lubed and sometimes you have to play around for it a little bit. It doesn't have to be super tight, just tight enough that the collar no longer spins freely on the ride height adjuster, like right now. It's good enough. Ain't going to move, your ride height's set. Once again, using our chain wax, spray a little bit on the interior surface of the upper spring seat. It is a white ABS plastic piece with a rubber ring around it. Spraying on the chain wax will allow it to slide on easier and then once it sets up, it will still maintain grip without attracting dirt. This tit on the uh, back end of uh, the car hooks into the rubber portion of the upper spring seat. One simply presses and twists it until it's flush 
against the top as so. Okay, I, this is your spring. Here is your lower ride height adjuster. Here is your upper spring seat. This is the spring. I recommend putting in the spring such that one can read the rate and length of the spring from the side, right side up, and one simply, and one simply lies it in place, pushes up on the arm sufficiently to screw in the lower shock bolt. Okay, in order to install the rear shock assembly into the mount, one puts the paper gasket over top of the mount, and then very gently removing the old gasket, or you can use the old gasket if you want and not use the new gasket, but very gently holding it with one side of your finger Locate the hole, and place it as such. Simply catch the nuts by hand on the thread just to get them started. That the nuts are self-locking nylon thread. On your rear dampers that you've removed, much like the springs, Start the nuts back on the threads, put the paper gasket back on, which is nothing more than a little splash shield so the rainwater won't seep through to your interior boot, and uh, wash them and put them aside for when you either go to sell the car to put them back on and sell your ground control suspension separately, upon which you'll get a very nice return, by the way. You'll get at least two-thirds of what you spent back or even to sell it to somebody with a uh, 3 Series E46 Coupe, which, believe it or not, the suspension does make a world of difference to the handling. Okay, as always with the lower rear shock bolt or any other bolt on the car, prior to putting it on, dress it with antices. You will be very glad you did. Not that this is a torque critical bolt, but nonetheless, all bolts should be dressed. Okay, on this particular Coney, which is a newer model, you will see that it has a built-in sort of washer which is permanently attached. If you do not have this on your Kony, be sure to use a big flat washer to prevent the interior rubber around the shock mount eye from pulling through. As you can see, without a washer, this whole area could pull out, leaving the bolt the mounting bolt in place yet leaving the shock loose and floating around. Either holding up with your hand, using a jack, or having a friend hold up the lower control arm, start the bolt such that the shock remains in place without you holding it. Okay, finally we're going to tighten up the lower shock mount and we're going to torque it to 60 newton meters, although Technically, the BMW spec is 100. This is a non-critical fastener, and it does not have to go that high. And I have seen people strip these, trying to get to the 100 Newton meter BMW spec. Okay, now, from the inside, we are going to torque down the upper rear shock mount to 24 Newton meters.